And during the day, he was fucking Clark Kent, like very <laughs> presentable. Here's your ticket, ma'am. Like everything. <laughs> but at night, he was the monster. Wait, have you ever yeah. served time? Yeah. What for? Uh, I was I was at a little get together, and the people that I went with didn't tell me, but they decided to fucking rob the house because they were drug dealers and they had like a pound of weed and a bunch of cash. And so, fight broke out. Motherfuckers pulled guns out, and I was like, I guess we gotta get fucking go. So we fuck got my car left. And a couple of days later, the fucking SWAT team came to my house and arrested me, arrested everyone I was with. So, what did they get you for? Was it DWI or something else? Something that happened? No, it's 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 called accomplice liability. So, in the state of Washington, like let's say, Woody, let's say you and I are robbing a bank, right? Okay. I'm and then it. and then uh, you decide to shoot a bank teller, right? Uh, not only will you get murdered but because I'm your accomplice, I get murdered, even if I had no knowledge of you. So like me being with them and, and just, just taking them home and, and like, like they, they treat me like I was like the getaway driver. Right. And uh, so I got the same charges as everyone else. Uh, so my charges uh, that I finally plead to were robbery in the first burglary in the first, but mm. mounted into one charge. So it's only one strike. And they gave me 41 months. Wait, they how much did you serve? 41, 41, 41 months. Oh. Wow, that's more than I then, expected. How much did you I have did to serve? Twenty-seven. Damn, twenty-seven months. What kind of facility were you at? At first, it was jail for the first nine months. Find the case, oh. and then, and then uh, after that, I got sent to where they do uh, the selection process of where you're supposed to go. It was really fucked up because what they go they go by points to see what custody level you're at, and. And I lost points because of my age, lost points because of the violent crime. And because I had two violent crimes, they treated the, the, the burglary as, as a previous violent. Those three things put me in maximum security. Is, and so the, is maximum so security the worst? It sounds the worst, but on TV, they make it sound like you're more isolated from the other people and it's even safer. Um, maximum security basically means the least amount of movement. That's the best way to describe where a uh, minimum is literally like a farm where people just walk around and everything's it's like uh, a and farm. I, <laughs> it really that's is. exactly what it's, it is. It's a, and that, that's where I went. It's, a it's, it's like a big farm. And like, and honestly, they'll have a fence that a dog could jump over. And you think right, like, oh, wow. That. But the thing is, though, is like everyone that's in there is under five years and like a minimum threat, you know? And so, like, if someone were to escape, they're an idiot because they're getting another five. So, like, you had state charges, don't... right? Yeah, state charges. Washington yeah, I ended state. up they, my uh, my charges were federal, so I had to go to this federal um, low security in, uh, yeah. in Alabama, which was yeah. kind of what you're describing. It, it was it was pretty. That was it wasn't minimum. that bad. That was the minimum. Did you so, ever go to? Um, oh, go ahead. Please continue. Okay, so I get. Sent to, um, I get sent to Monroe, and it was, uh, it was super duper nice. So they actually filmed the butterfly effect there. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if you guys remember that movie, but when they were filming yeah. the prison scenes, they actually filmed it in the prison with us inmates. Um, anyways, I got into some trouble when I was in Monroe because I was I learned how to play pinochle, and I love pinochle, and I was running store, which basically means. If you are out of like ramen or hygiene or whatever, you can come to me and I might, I might give you like two ramens and then you give me three back on store. So I was just stacking hell of food and hygiene and stuff that I never bought. So when they searched the, the cell, they're like, your book says that you've never bought anything yet. You have like, a you have like a hundred dollars worth of fucking food here, dude. Like what's the, food? and then they found, <laughs> then they found a notebook that had all the bets of all the fucking people because I used to keep I used to keep tabs of who owes who on the people. And <laughs> so, so they thought I was running like a fucking gambling racketeering thing. You were. Then, <laughs> <laughs> they only thought that because of the gaming racketeering. So they knew what I was doing at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Shut up. But yeah, you got it. Okay. <laughs> so then they, they sent me over to Walla Walla. And at Walla Walla is like super hardcore. Four man cells. Uh, majority of people are in there for murder. Lifers. Like they, and it's very, very racist. You can't be in a cell with like, a, I could be in a cell with a black dude. And the way they do it is they go, okay, we have Nathaniels, we got Italians, we got fucking Muslims, black dudes, and they alternate them through the cells so that no, no two like groups can be like next to each other because they're going to like convene and mob up or something. Concentration of power. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, I talked to the lady, the, the consultation lady or whatever. She's like, all right, uh, look at your file. If you behave yourself for six months, I'll send you wherever you want to go. You want to go to McNeil Island? Home. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like well, I, yeah. How about Vegas? Uh, course, yeah. <laughs> and so um, they go, you can go to any medium security place that you want to go. And I'm like, all right, I want to go back to Monroe because Monroe ha- had the, the maximum, medium, and minimum. And the lady looked at me crazy. And I'm, why? She's like, are you sure you want to go to Monroe? And I'm like, yeah. It, looks fucking amazing there's like grass there's recording studios in the fucking gyms like it's a it's like the nicest place it's considered the nice prison in the state of washington and she's like all right i get i'm like why is she acting all weird so then i um go back to the cell and all my my fucking cellmates who are like fucking like like one of them was this six foot five 380 bodybuilder dude and uh, with a fucking tattoo that said 13 and a half on his neck, which means he had like 12 jurors, one judge, and half a ch- And like, um, Wait, can you, I didn't hear those <laughs> words 12 jurors, one judge, and half a chance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so um, I get back from the cell and I'm like, all happy. And so I'm like, going to Twin River. And then they said, what? <laughs> and I'm like, well, what? no, man. That was scary. What, what is the fucking problem with Twin Rivers, dude? And they're like, let me see your paperwork. Again, so I like, fucking pull up my paperwork. They read it. They're like, "Why the f- fuck would you want to go to Twin Rivers?" I'm like, "It's near my family. They can visit, it, and it's like the nicest." And they're like, "Do you know what Twin Rivers is?" I'm like, "No." They go, "It's the sex offender treatment program," and I'm like, Ooh. "What?" And they go, "Yeah, it's eighty percent sex offender, and they have to have twenty percent regular inmates to keep state." F- and I'm like, are you fucking serious? Because normally sex <laughs> offenders don't walk around. Like, we find out you're a sex offender, dude. You got to be gone by. You know what I mean? Like, they don't. They don't play around. Can you with say sex those offenders. words again. You got to be what? Gone. You got to be gone. Like, you need to be not here anymore. Like, okay. PC up, up, and get the fuck out of here. We don't want. We don't want to share meals with people that are like kid fuckers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. They they don't like sex offenders in in jails. So I'm just like, okay, well, let's see what happens. Dude, I get there. It's an amazing, vac- but like, it's literally like that movie they live. He has the glasses and he sees everyone is like, you know, it's like, yeah, everyone there was a fucking weirdo. And there was like, <laughs> you had to like find like a couple cool dudes that weren't sex offended just to fucking <laughs> group up, up and be like, oh, I got your back. I got your back. Okay, cool, dude. These guys are weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, how long were you in the sex offender paradise? <laughs> uh, I was there for seven months. Oh, oh man, no. so that's so long to spend there. Oh, listen oh, to this, God. dude. So, Monroe's on a hill, right? And for whatever reason, they decided to put the maximum, minimum, maximum, medium, and minimum on the hill, and then they decided to put the high school, middle school, elementary school school on the same fucking and so from the bleachers from the bleachers these sex offenders would be at yard watching kids play at recess and i'm just (laughs) like someone needs to know about about this like what the fuck and so i I asked my buddy asked my buddy i'm like do you know about this he's like yeah of course everyone knows about them I'm like, why doesn't anybody like call the news they're like we've tried they don't report like no one says shit Wait. And I'm like, you're, te- you're telling me what was it? no, I, 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 the sex offender paradise. I, look, if you could just overlook the whole sex offender thing, 
Seems like the best prisoner jail I've heard about so far, right? I, I, when it's amazing. It's amazing. Right? All the people are like, they might be violent in a way, but not towards me, right? They, it seems yeah. like that, like I would be safe there. I would be uh, not bothered there. You'd fit right in. I know what you're saying, right? <laughs> right? right? <laughs> like, One second. I'm a bit of a pedophile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> he's like he's like that Steve Buscemi meme with the skateboard. Right. Hello, fellow rapist. <laughs> I just feel like if you can overlook what dreadful people they are, then uh, yeah. it's a safe. I, I was I will say this, good as, use. as as far as like prison violence goes, uh, it only happens if motherfuckers want it to happen. Okay, like it's not like, like people are like, oh, you bump my shoulder, let's throw down. You know what I mean? Um, so like all, all this shit in movies where they think shit's just popping off left and right, it's not, it's like, I literally went to the worst, the worst place. And that's where everyone, I actually like that better. Okay. Let's say, let's say your buddy, uh, that lives downtown owes you 20 bucks, right? All he has to do is just avoid running in in there. We're not. We can't avoid each other, so everyone has to keep their fucking work. So everyone's fucking honest. It's amazing. Like, most stand-up people ever, dude. I actually like those people better than, like, people out here who think they can get away with yeah. anything. Yeah, I met some really decent, good people when I was in prison. Like, like legitimately. Yeah. Like, now, there were some scary motherfuckers. But, like, even Snow. Like, despite the fact that Snow had murdered people and trafficked huge amounts of methamphetamine and was in a Mexican drug gang, like, Mm-hmm. He was like he was a stand up guy like like he his word meant something like you would yeah. not catch snow telling you a lie he'll murder but he won't fucking lie and he won't fucking yeah. steal like, like he won't like, do anything he won't do it civilian you know what I mean like he'll if he does do something it's something no. that's like in the game you, you know yeah that's that's how a lot of them saw that and and uh, so that was interesting the, the the worst part about your experience to me is the nine months in jail though that had to be shit right that okay. At first, I felt like when I got out, right, I honestly t- used to tell people I was like, the nine months in jail stressing about my fucking cake was worse than the rest of the time where I'm pretty much on vacation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when you do time, it doesn't really, because you don't, don't have a job, they feed you, you're ne- never going to go cold. You, it's a vacation in a way. You just can't leave the premise. The people that are affected are your, your family that miss you whatever reason you know um what the fuck was this just about to say? uh how bad jail was in comparison oh jail was horrible dude jail jail sucked like j- i f- feel like jail is meant for like a week not for nine months yeah everyone, exactly <laughs> you can get bond in, everyone oh my dude all right this is the list that my original filing charges Robber in the first with a firearm, burglary in the first with a firearm, kidnapping in the first with a firearm, assault in the first with a firearm, and then like firearm possession. Where'd the kidnapping it was like this, come from? Because he wouldn't let them leave the premises. Yeah, one them. of the people basically said, "Don't, don't move." You know what I mean? Oh, okay. or like that's or how they got OJ. Yeah, that's um, okay. Now about meeting interesting people in there, I met. The most interesting person ever. His name was Steve Drexler. Okay. Now, when I, I'm at the Sex Offender Paradise Place, we, you had your own cell, which was amazing. And but you also had a bunk bed. I usually just kept stuff up there, like you know, just stuff up there. But every once in a while, the, they'll transport somebody that will stay there overnight and then get released in the morning. You know, like they might be over all the way in eastern Washington, but need to be released in western Washington. So they'll bring them over, have them stay one night above my bunk and leave. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him. And uh, and uh, at first he didn't really want to talk. And I was like, I'm like, I'm offering him cigarettes. I'm offering him fucking food. And he was all stand up. And then I realized I was like, hey, dude, I- I'm not a sex defender, bro. I'm in here for fucking home invasion robbery. And then I showed him my paperwork. He's like, oh, okay, cool. I just thought everyone here was a fucking rapist. I'm like, no, no, we're not. <laughs> and so... Common um, misconception. <laughs> when you're in a cell with a dude with nothing else, you're going to have fucking conversation shooting back and forth. 
So finally, I ended up telling him what I was in there for, the whole story. And so finally, I asked him, I was like, so man, what's your, what's your story, dude? Like, what, 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 what brought you here? What brought you to? And at first he wouldn't do it. And I kept <laughs> on egging him on. And he finally told me, and it's probably my favorite story of all time. All right. So this dude ran the Boeing IMAX, okay, in downtown Seattle. Now, this is an actual stadium IMAX theater. This isn't some AMC shit, okay? This is like a stadium, massive, huge IMAX, right? Well, this dude also had a little a bit of a, a meth problem. And so oh. he would um, he would work during the day, smoke all night, and then come to work and work during the day and do this a week and a half and then finally crash. Well, this, this dude figured out he stole a lap and was able to plug it into the projector and watch whatever he wanted to watch on the IMAX thing. So this dude decided to start watching porn. I knew it. <laughs> Started watching porn in the IMAX, dude. Now, I don't know how amazing that must be because I'm a big fan of porn. And porn <laughs> on a phone versus porn on a 65 is mine. So if you if I can watch some porn on a fucking IMAX screen, I'm down, right? So this dude, this dude literally draped like the longest cable ever from the projector room all the way down to like the middle middle rows of the IMAX, so he could plug his laptop <laughs> in. <laughs> and, and fucking pull up porn on the IMAX, dude. Sounds amazing, right? <laughs> so, dude, this, dude, this dude would smoke meth, watch porn, and jerk off, off, and then like smoke meth and get some more linens pencil and keep going, right? Well, and he's and smoking meth, and so he's beating off for hours at a time. For hours, right? <laughs> so, then this dude, so then, then this dude decided that he would go get like double the and find a fucking, and find like a pro. Be like, listen, I'm not going to pay, but I got free math. And they're like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they would bring these prostitutes. This guy kind of rocks. <laughs> he would bring prostitutes into the IMAX show. Af <laughs> yeah. after hours, would fire up a porn without telling the girl. She'd be like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and they would smoke meth and fuck and watch porn. And he had this fucking ritual where he was just doing this. And during the day, he was fucking Clark Kent, like very <laughs> presentable. Here's your ticket, ma'am. Like everything. <laughs> but at night, he was the monster. Okay? <laughs> well, cool guy he the basically week so far. Been, he'd been going too hard for too long, brought this prostitute over. They smoked, they fucked. And this dude passed the fuck out and was not waking up. So the girl's like, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. And he's, he's done for. Like his bender is over, right? And so she tries to leave and the fucking alarm system goes off. So now the police come, come into the fucking theater and there's like a fucking gangbang fucking theater at full fucking THX sound quality and this prostitute <laughs> with this guy with a fucking with a meth pipe or whatever and a cord going from the laptop all the way up to the projection room red handed I love, red, literally red handed pants around his fucking knees laying <laughs> reclining in shape and I'm like I would have loved to be the cop to fucking come to that scene that would have been amazing so he got fucking arrested he basically, he had some priors, so he got some weird charge that they gave him a year and a day. The only reason why Damn. they give you a year and a day is so you don't spend the rest of your time in jail if they have to send you to prison. So he only had to spend, he, he had, had his case, and then he only had to spend like maybe four, did his time, and he was getting out the next day. And I was, yeah, your story beats mine, dude. That, that <laughs> is, um, you're my hero. Like, that is yeah. awesome. That That's is a, fucking outrageous. An awesome story. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, I feel like... Dude, you know how long I've been sitting... Busted, here, here's, I've been like, you know thing. what? This guy's had a tough enough night. Here's the thing, dude. Back in the day when I used to come on your guys' show, I used to do commentaries, I never told anybody about me being in, like... Because I thought it would be, like, a bad look. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't... I never 
wanted to bring it up. You know? Wouldn't want but that. now that it's been like 10 years of me in the game, and you know, if you Google only blade, it doesn't look good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just said, fuck it, I'll share. Were you uh, what what got you in the hole? And how long were you in there? Like why the why they put you in there? Fuck it. I'm telling the story. Um <laughs> Please battery last. I okay. I love Pinochle. I was playing Pinochle, and this guy named Sylvia come for people who don't know. Real quick, can you explain Pinochle? Just Pinochle's Pinochle was the greatest card game ever made. Some people. Um, Who doesn't know what Pinochle is? It only consists of face cards, so there's no number, and there's there's like multiple jack. There's four jack of diamonds, four queen of spades. And um, so there's 80 cards in a deck. You deal them out and you play it just like the game Spain, where mm-hmm. you lead suit and you try to take books. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's all I can really explain it to give you a simple sure. gist of it. I love the game. I play it on my phone. Um, I, I've almost made it to old folks' homes where they were playing it because I wanted, like, those are the only people to play it. And fucking old people. Like old folks, mm-hmm. they wouldn't let me. In. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was the au- most awkward conversation because I was. So who are you here to visit? I'm like no one. I was just seeing if anybody, if there's any action at the pinochle table. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, sorry, this is what? not a casino. <laughs> <laughs> it's a like, retirement community. <laughs> they're like, and I'm like, can I go in? there and visit the old people they're like no you can't (laughs) (laughs) you don't you don't let just like nice people come in and say hi to the old folks they love that they're like no sir you smell so strongly about (laughs) 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 fucking fucking gary's got his teeth on the table it's getting real (laughs) (laughs) you've got a cooler (laughs) dolores has been on medication Bitch <laughs> <laughs> will have a seizure uh, if she loses this hand. <laughs> Please, those medications are for the patients. <laughs> no, Bjorn can't come in with you. <laughs> you can't have the morphine. <laughs> no, that's and, hilarious. So, so anyway, good. And, and, so I, I love Pinochle, <laughs> and this dude oh. comes. This new, this new inmate comes in and wants to play, and I could tell he's a degenerate gambler. And you don't get your money on your books the first week you're there. So I know I'm going to have to wait a week, but I say, fuck. So we play a couple games. Like, you're only playing like a dollar a game, right? Mm -hmm. I play a couple games, and I realize he's getting frustrated. So I fucking tell my partner, I was like, hey, dude, throw this game. Like, don't, don't try to win at all. I'll fuck up. Just go with it. So we play the game. He, I gave him so many opportunities to win and he fucking up, but eventually I literally renamed and set myself and like get, and gave him gave him the fucking the next thing. He won. He was ecstatic. He was like, ha, I knew I could beat you, you bitch. I'm like, <laughs> all right, all right, dude. Calm the fuck down. You want to play again? Like, I was kind of mad because I was like, I let you win, dude. Like, if you only knew that I let you win to string you along, but you're cocky thinking you fucking won the World Series here, dude. Like, stop. So, mm-hmm. over the course of a week, I got him to where he owed me like 50 bucks. So, I let him start playing $10 hands or $10 games, which is unheard of to, to give him a chance to win back. I let him win one here and there. Keep on. He owed me 300 bucks. <laughs> 300, you said. Wow. 300. Okay. So, the way when you get someone in that kind of debt in there, you can only order fifty dollars worth of store at a time. So I go, mm. all right, dude, I'm gonna get like thirty five dollars worth of stuff for me. You can get a little bit of food and some hygiene. Don't want you picking up here, and then just do that three times. So oh, thirty five. What was that? That would be like a hundred and five. Yeah, whatever. You can do it anyway. Ten- Go ahead. Okay, I know it's 105. It's 105. Yeah. 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 
Anyways, you guys are at. Um, <laughs> no, it's a joke I make every week, the whole incalculable thing. Don't take it personally. <laughs> okay. Um, and so uh, the day that I'm supposed to get store, I'm like, hey, guys. Um, I go, hey, man, we're going to go to Mainline, which is like where you go get your food. I'm going to go to Mainline. When I get back, uh, just have my stuff ready in a bag. I'll walk by your cell. You can just toss it to me. He's like, yeah, whatever, dude. And I'm just like, okay, that's not the response I want, but okay. Go to mainline. Come up to a cell. I'm like, all right, dude, let me get that. Let me get that. And he's like, fuck you, WAP. And, which is like basically like the N-word for Italian people. If this would have happened on the streets, I would have been like, whatever, dude. But this is prison where <laughs> if you let someone talk to you like that and don't do anything, everyone's going to think you're a bitch. It's prison mentality. So I went in there and I started piecing them in. Just started just beating on them real quick. With just empty fists? Just, yeah. Okay. You know. Well, this is a thing to me, like stabbing, but yeah. I got confused. <laughs> no, I'm no, masturbating him. Furiously. <laughs> hey, so hey, and I, I, I got him coming, right? <laughs> he's, he's coming <laughs> hard. So, and so I say, that's another 30. Of course, the tear is like yelling and screaming. And the fucking riot shield guards come in, pin us, and take us to the hole. Okay. Did he ever Now, him? no, because that's when they transferred me to Wall of Wall. Uh, now, one, one thing I will say, and this will give you a time frame, when they took me to Shelton, I was in the mm-hmm. hole for, for 36 days, okay? When they took me to Shelton, it was the first time I listened to music, and they played I Like the Way You Move by Outkast, and Jamie Foxx and Twista, like Slow Jam. Those were yeah. like popular on the radio at the time. And I never heard the songs, but listening to music for the first time after fucking 30 days, dude, I got goosebumps, dude. I was, this is amazing. Hmm. So like, imagine watching, not listening. Go ahead. I've been watching uh, that show 30 day, uh, 60 days in and uh, season six. And uh, quickly, for anyone who doesn't know for some reason, they put undercover people in a jail, like a hardcore jail, to try to root out drugs, mm-hmm. contraband. And see how well the COs do their job. Well, anyway, one of the participants, someone who is undercover, uh, loans this guy three packets of grits because the man is hungry. And he says, you owe me three soups. And the guy's like, cool, I'll get you tomorrow. Tomorrow comes around. My girl's messing with my money. She won't put any money on my books. I can't get you your soups. He's like, you're going to pay me. And he's like, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Next day comes. I don't got nothing, man. I got nothing. He's like, all right, all right. Take off your shirt, your pants, your flip flops, and give me your fucking towel. Yeah, give me your fucking towel. And and he takes all of these things from them. He is the undercover, Mm. and he has taken all of this man's clothing and his towel, which is a commodity in prison, by the way. Your towel is. We had three towels, and you could pay money to get a special towel. But this seemed like his only fucking towel in jail. He then takes this man's flip-flops, pants, shirt, and towel and gives it away to his buddies. And they're all laughing about it. The guy went into PC. Yeah. He, 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 he went protective custody after Dude, that. He like was on the show. Yes. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> what an Kyle, asshole. I, 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 have to, I have to slide this in, okay? So in Washington, you can get a care, you can get a care package up to 15 pounds. Okay. You can get Oboyoberto meat sent in. You can get bull- Book sending, or you can have your family sending, but only okay. once, like basically four times a year. Some dude had a beef with some other dude and had his girl send him one pair of socks in his packet, and that was the only package he can get for three months, was just oh. a pair of socks. Fucked him over. Oh. So, meanwhile, meanwhile <laughs> his family put together a fucking care package, and he's on the phone, like, Why'd you deny the care package? He's like, I would have never denied that. It's this fucking ass. Sending me a pair of and I signed for it. <laughs> now realizing it, that's fucked up. That yeah, that's sucks. super fucked up. It, we could get whatever we wanted anytime we wanted, like sent in. I mean, they they would go through it. They read your yeah, letter. Of course, they they 
scan it, mm-hmm. drug dog on it and all that. But, um, but I had people send me books. So like Chiz sent me a bunch of books. Kitty sent me a bunch of books and I yeah. read, I read like voraciously. I went through Stephen King's got, I'm not going to say I went through half the Stephen King catalog. Cause that would, did, I, did I need you, to be aware. Read the, the, the four novella story thing, the different seasons, the, the what now or novella the different it's, it's, it's called different seasons Mm-mm. where it's four short, it's four, not short stories, but the novella is basically not long enough for a book short enough to be a short story. Um, I, I read the miss the, Sha- the Shawshank Redemption app people and stand by me all made movies from that uh, okay okay no i read eleven twenty two sixty three. uh the mist it um a good bit of the stand i was i was working on it when i got released and i didn't go back to it um i wa- it was crazy long uh the yeah. book it and uh there were some others i'm not th- oh i read a little bit of the gunslinger pissed? do you ever get pissed at stephen king when he spends 30 pages describing a, f- a dude's arm Yes. It's like, come on, dude. Let's keep it. Keep this moving. Oh my! In eleven twenty two sixty three, he was describing some guy who had diarrhea, and it was like forty minutes of. I, I listened to it on audiobook, so mm-hmm. it must have been like forty minutes spent on how his stomach was upset. To me, because I was, you know, literally trying to kill time, mm-hmm. sitting on my sitting on my fucking bunk in prison. Take your time. We got nothing but it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. so like, I didn't mind. I just, I just try to do, you know, I, I try to let my mind paint the picture that, that he's describing and it, and it becomes a little bit more visceral for me. So I didn't mind it. If I were listening to an audio book, I could definitely understand that, especially you, because you're like, you're listening to it while you do stuff and you're like wanting a, a hop along kind of story. And he don't yeah. do that too much. It's a little mm-hmm. easier to follow when things are happening. You know, like at, you zone out and you could be like, well, we're still on the diarrhea for real. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. The, uh, he had to buy incontinence pants, which I guess are big diapers. And there was this long story about how the guy behind the cash register reacted to the incontinence pants. And I was like, oh, I goodness. had no problem with uh, any of that. Yeah. Send me a link to those. <laughs> <laughs> either, either, either subscribe, donate or get the fuck out. That's right. Fat boy. <laughs>